In this series, lowimpact.org and the Open Credit Network talks with people working to build a mutually owned, democratic, decentralised economy that builds community and doesn't destroy nature. We want to increase collaboration to bring about system change. Find links to the sites mentioned in the videos in the description below. Join the conversation by liking, commenting and subscribing to our channel. That's you know, what I was going to ask you. I was going to ask you how difficult it is to make a living. Uh, and you, do you manage it from the small holding? No. No. <laughs> no. No, I teach, I teach Tai Chi. Sarah sells vintage clothes. Um, you know, we, but we don't have to make a living for under an OPD project. We have to have a land-based business. So we have to be working towards something which is going to cover, I think it's council tax, communications, uh, clothing, that element of food we don't grow ourselves. Um, there's another couple of things. It's it's kind of if you if you boil down your needs to the bare minimum, you you have to eventually within your five years cover that from a land based business. But it's a real question whether that's actually possible or whether people are just going to be writing out you know f little bits of fiction for their annual reports uh, every year. If you're producing, let's say, uh, honey. And charging six pounds fifty a pot in West Wales, there are not very many people who are going to buy that honey when they could go to Tesco's and get, you know, honey from another country in a squeezy plastic bottle for less than half the price. Yeah, the, the same is true with anything. I mean, you know, if you're producing fruit juice or or vegetable boxes, uh, you know, or um, or, or dairy or anything. If you're doing it on a small scale, the price is just not going to reflect market conditions out here. We have, this, you know, we have this discussion all the time because you know I'm working with the Open Credit Network to build a sort of a, a mutual credit trading network for the UK. And yeah. we have sort of small, small producers. What they produce is really quite expensive. So yeah. we, we have people who make textiles and blankets, and they're bloody expensive blankets. And, you know, as you said, honey and pottery and baskets and clothes and anything you care to mention if it's but the thing is it's really high quality yeah. and it's it's sustainable and it builds community so if we can put those people together it doesn't matter what the price is you know you you you, you will be providing food which in money terms is quite expensive and you will be getting other produce craft produce or different kinds of food which is also in monetary terms expensive, but it's, you can see it as a, like a swap. Yeah, that, yeah, and that, that works except for when, like a, like a lot of people who don't have lots of, lots of money, your, your kind of, your domestic economy, if you like, is leaking uh, rent or interest, yeah. you know, uh, or, or, you know, or whatever your, your, your financial needs are. So I, the other day I, I bought, um, a net of onion sets um, and I bought more than I need when they arrive and when they, when they arrive I'm, I'm distributing them out to other people at some something between what I paid and what the normal retail price is okay so I'm covering my costs and I'm buying my onions out of this this process um, I'm, I'm trading in onion onion set futures right um, but someone but someone said to me um, oh can we do a swap and I said, well, I just can't, you know, I'm covering, I'm covering the costs of my onions. Like whatever, like I, I honestly, because of our financial situation, I can't enter into that because I have money leaking out of our That's household good. economy. You have every to have month. all your needs in that system somehow. So that you're, that would be lovely. Yeah. yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's, 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 um, you know, well, it's truly problematic, but then, you know, the people who are interested in social change have been through this, for decades and it goes right back to the 19th century and people say oh the cooperative movement was a fantastic idea we could be living in a cooperative economy in the end what 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 hampers the development of a cooperative economy is the existence of capitalism it's mm -hmm. very difficult to build very not impossible i won't say it's impossible but very very difficult to build a parallel system when it, capitalism is kind of tearing in tearing people apart and tearing communities apart. it will try to eat you if you try to build an alternative it will try to eat you yeah 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 it's tricky so, it's a tricky one um, but you know, I, I think with regard to opd getting you know getting back to opd um 
it would it would be uh, easier to envisage a, a, a healthy internal economy in OPD when there when when there might be like ten times as many people doing it. Mm. You know that then that becomes then that becomes easier because then things that you might need like onion sets or tree you know fruit trees or livestock then there'll be an internal kind of internal um, market a possibility of of trading within OPD. Um, and with the crafts people, and with, I think this is another of Simon Fellis' things, isn't it? Uh, for crafts people, you could who don't need any land, uh, they could have a, a type of OPD just to have to build houses on the outskirts of villages where they could actually have little workshops yeah. and yeah, yeah, do blacksmiths. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, I think the policy. Tank I think files. the poli yeah. yeah, I think the idea of a land-based business has got to be has, has got to be made more adaptable. People have got to be able to do it without being small holders. Um, a friend of ours had a problem around the fact he's a, he's a blacksmith, and and they and they, they couldn't the 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 planners couldn't get their heads around this being, um, you know, uh, something acceptable under OPD. But of course, you know, every good rural economy, a uh, village economy, needs smiths. It needs of people course, to work yeah. metal. Um, well, we need nurses too, right? So we need people who can work in a local hospital and come home and and live a one planet lifestyle. Yeah. Um, at the moment, they can't even afford the flats they've got to rent, you know, let alone being able to build a straw bale house on the edge of a village or the edge of a town. I, I don't, I don't, I don't, um, yeah, I, I don't think the, I wouldn't want to be, I wouldn't want to be heavily critical of OPD as a policy. It's just that we have to be realistic about the socioeconomic environment in which it's trying to, in which it's trying to flower, you know? Yeah. Um, I've, I've seen plenty of evidence that small farms produce more food per acre than large industrial farms and they employ more people. So I think that's something we should be, we should be promoting, shouldn't we? But, and yet it's so difficult for people to get into. I mean, what would you, what would you advise people to do? What would be the first step? How, how could they get out of their sort of marketing job for a large corporation in London or a big city? and you know, take steps towards being a, a smallholder. What, what would, what would, well, you my, I, I think to be, to, here's the thing, Dave, Sarah and I, Sarah and I look at ourselves and how we got to where we are now. And we only managed ever to, um, to own a place uh, and, and, and not really own it, but we only ever managed to own a place because we were lent money by, by my biological father in this case. Right. And we look at ourselves now and we think, no, really, um, this was never for us, you know, realistically speaking. I mean, it, it, unless we accept the kind of Thatcherite merit, meritocracy thing where, oh, yes, you can have whatever you work hard enough to get, because we've worked quite hard over the years, right? Uh, we, have, we have to admit it was never really for us. So I'm, I'm less interested about the relatively well-heeled guy in marketing in London than I am about people who live in uplands in Swansea who might want to live in the countryside. But I think the solution is the same, which is to... Which is to try to build communities starting mm. with housing cooperatives working co uh, you know workers cooperatives and and move down that route and that is perfectly um uh acceptable under opds right it's a, it's it, it's a coherent idea to use with with one planet development so you can find a group form a cooperative then buy your land and then and, and and then move into into one planet development in Wales. So did you, did you form a cooperative? No. What we formed was a company. Um, because when Sarah and I uh, came back to the UK, uh, along with the people who um, along with the people, excuse me, it's my son, um, along with the people who are involved in this project, um, we weren't looking to form a community for various reasons, but primarily for Sarah and I, because we, we felt exhausted with the, um, from, from trying to, to find and establish communities. Okay. I, I think one of the problems, uh, by the by, one of the problems with that is if you, if you have someone who's in a proprietorial situation, it's difficult to then create a community around them. Yeah. Um, but that's another, that's another conversation. Um, so no, we didn't, we don't have a co-op here. But now, looking at it from a design point of view, and I, I know it's hilarious given that I've taught permaculture design for years that I'm now applying these principles to my own life rather late in the day. Um, 
from a design point of view, what we need is more people. What, 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 what our five acres needs is more people, not a couple. Um, and, and that's what I would advise people to do. I would say to them, look, uh, you've got to look at, um, you've got to look at the, the, the human element first, because one day you're going to be, one day you're going to be ancient, you know, you're going to be 50 and you're not going to feel like you did when you were 30. <laughs> and, and, and one day you're going to realize that your kids aren't going to stay on the small holding probably. You know, and one day you're going to realize that, that you're never going to, on your own, you're never going to get that magnificent project done mm. because you haven't got enough money to chuck at it to make it happen. You know, and, and, that, and, and so that's, that's, where, that's where we are. And actually a major part of our plan at the moment is to, is to dissolve our debt. And we're really hoping it'll happen quite soon by having a friend buy in, by just, you know, just going, no, actually you know, owning this place all, all by ourselves is just a millstone around our neck. Um, so that, that's, that would be my advice. Um, but it's still really difficult for people because unless you go through something, unless, you're, um, unless you go through a, a process like going through radical roots, for example, it's still problematic to get the deposit and to get a mortgage. And then you've still got a debt. So it's, 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 it's not, it's not easy to, to, you know, I'm not, I'm not pretending that's a, a problem, uh, a problem free route, but at least it's not as problematic as yes, we'll do it all on our own. We're a nuclear family and that's a viable model, you know, cause I don't think it is. So you said you've got, you've got five acres within a 20 acre project. Um, yeah. and that, and that project is a, is a limited company. Uh, yeah, well, it, well, it was a limited, sorry, Dave, it was a limited company in order to, the limited company behaved like a developer. So we put our planning application in and it behaved like a developer and it still holds the barn and the track, but the land has been, the land has been separated now. So, so we went down the land registry and separated the land. The How many parcels? Four. Um, four, four, five acre plus. Yeah. 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 Right. Okay. Okay. Um, so then you're, you're all very yeah. friendly with each other and you've got a little community going on or? Nah. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think. See, one of the one. It, um, sorry, people. Eh? <laughs> um, we none of us set out with that in mind, and Sarah and Sarah and I, least of all, we we were probably the most standoffish of, of all, um, and and, uh, and and we were wrong. You know, we we were wrong. It was a big mistake. Uh, I, that my, I would advise people to get these things sorted first. You know, when I, when I teach permaculture now, um, <laughs> it's, it's, when I teach permaculture now, I say to people, look, really any fool can build a straw bale cabin, you know, get any bunch of people together on an afternoon and you're going to be able to create some raised beds. You know, the first year you start gardening, if you've got a book and someone to help you, you're going to be able to do your propagation. But it's the human side of things that's that that, that that makes permaculture or breaks permaculture or community or co-ops or OPD. Um, but that's that's the really, really tricky stuff. I mean, I, I can teach people how to make a raised bed or, or put up a straw bale cabin, but I'm damned if I've got the recipe for doing all the human stuff that's that's in my opinion has to underlie it in order to make it work. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, when I, I used to live at, yeah. um, live at Redfield Community, and people say, and it was a, it was the it was the common saying. And we, what's the best thing about living at Redfield? The people. And what's the worst thing about living at Redfield? The people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just, yeah. I, I I've been I've been rubbish I've been I've been rubbish at that all my adult life, and all my adult life I've called myself a I've called myself a, a socialist or a communist. Okay. So I'm a, I'm a communist in my late, uh, you know, in my late four, I'm 50 now, but in my late forties, only in my late forties did I start to really realize this thing that we, we talk about community. We talk about, about, you know, society without ever questioning what those words mean or how they might work or what we are or whether we're qualified even to start building those things. So one of the notions here at, at, at Rulas with the four houses is that um, 
more communal elements might develop as time passes. And I think that's great. It's just it might require the passing of a of a broken of a broken generation, you know. We might need we might need to look to the, the next generation who are here, who have been used to the idea of of this place. But again, you've got the whole, you know, the whole kind of centrifugal force of capitalism and and I thought you were an anarchist, by the way, not a communist. Yeah, 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 I am. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I had this. <laughs> I had this. Uh, I had this discussion with someone. Oh, there was a stupid online quiz. Are you a communist? You know, and it was kind of state this, state that. Everything owned by the state. And I and I said, oh no, you know, I'm a, I, I'm a communist. But but whoever whoever put this quiz together needs to look at the history of the, of the international working men's movement and realise that that there's a whole other, yeah. there's a whole other strand of communism. You know, yeah, I'm an anarchist communist. You're a Kropotkin rather than Marx. In the style of, of in the style of Kropotkin, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you, yeah. you built um, a straw bale house. Yeah, so we're in we're in what will officially be the barn. So um, this is another symptom of our of our of our financial um, situation. We we put up the first affordable structure we could from the planning permission, and then we have to start the other buildings. I think it's within five years of getting planning permission. Um, so we live in a, a straw bale barn, very simple structure, um, which is um, 15 meters long, six meters wide. Um, it's got sheep's wool insulation in the in the floor and in the roof. Um, simple steel um, uh, roof, and then larch board cladding from local larch. A lot of reclaimed doors and windows. Um, one of the things about OPD these days is, and, it, and it's a contrast between OPD and I would say the traditional low impact development movement, which Sarah and I come out of, um, is a lot of people do OPDs aren't real, uh, sorry to upset people, but they're not real self builders. They get builders to do their self building. Um, and for us, it was always about um, handmade, homemade houses. Um, so, you know, we put this um, shack up for under 20,000 pounds. That's good, buddy. Uh, I mean, we've lost, we've lost count now because, and it's not finished and it, maybe it never will be, but, um, you know, for under 20 grand. So, it, so our shack is of interest to a lot of people who don't really have much cash. Oh, yes, yeah. But whereas some of our neighbours and some other OPD projects have amazing houses, um, but houses with price tags on that I would, you know, I would shudder to, to have a guess at, you know. Well, that's the problem, isn't it? So if somebody else wants to buy that small hold to become a small holder, they're going to have a huge price tag because somebody wants to build a massive house. I guess, yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't, I think, uh, I think maybe one OPD, um, uh, holding has been sold so far, you know, or, uh, so, so obviously in order to retain the planning permission, you have to take on all of the, yeah, yeah, yeah. All of the commitments. Um, but Good. yeah, not, not a small price tag, not a small price tag. Um, well, that's you, because I know on the ecological land co-op, there's big discussions about the footprint of the house that you can build. Yeah. Because they don't want that problem. They don't want to, the next generation to come and find that they have to stump up hundreds of thousands of pounds because somebody built yes. a luxury house. And so yes. you just want function. Oh, and so, yeah, and so, sure. And so you have this thing, also this situation where um, if you want to build a house within, if you want to build a house as such, then you have to conform with building regulations. And building regulations put up the price enormously. So one of the situations we have in Wales, which I don't think you have in England yet, is that all new builds have to have fire sprinklers. Mm. Well, so, so that can add 10% to the price of a build. Mm. And did you so, have to so the, so the barn that we are in, no, because the barn that we are in um, is, uh, if they care to question us, um, is the same size as a twin unit caravan. So we would turn around and say to them, right. well, actually, this comes under the Caravan Act. No, no permanent foundations. And, it, and it's the same size as a twin unit caravan. I mean, you'd need one of those old Soviet cargo helicopters to get it off the site. But, but in theory, it's in theory, it's mobile. It's it's 
you know, because the Caravan Act is, the Caravan Act has quite a lot of wriggle room as to what actually is a caravan. Obviously, I haven't weighed this building and it's got no wheels. Um, but it, but it, it, look, it, can, it can be compared, at least, to a twin unit caravan. Gotcha. Just going off the LPD a little bit, um, I know that you've got strong political opinions. So, Me, Dave? <laughs> looking at the state of the world today, if you had a magic wand, what would you do? Within reason. <clears throat> I would begin. Um, I would begin by uh, creating um, communities, recreating communities at a mm. at a, a local human scale. And I don't think that any. I don't think that any political project that starts at the other end can succeed. I think you're absolutely right. It's it's, it's uh, when I go into um, see my family who live in a working class community, and they are kind. If I talk, if I start talking about the destruction of the environment, it doesn't really grab them. Uh, if I start talking about any kind of sort of economic or social issues, it doesn't really grab them. Um, but what does grab them is, is their community. Their, their high street's been bulldozed for a giant supermarket and car park, and they miss it. They miss the old shops and the markets, and people just drive to the shopping centre and drive back home again, and they don't really see each other. And the local pubs are closing down and they really crave community and that's that's really a way to to get people's attention if you can and that's what we want to do with the open credit network as well we want to we, we want to use it as an exchange mechanism within communities for small businesses rather than have large businesses just sucking wealth out of communities and yeah 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 dumping it into tax havens. sorry and dumping it into tax havens Yes, yes. Of course, this is the problem. This is the problem. Sufficient communities, or uh, human scale sufficient communities, are inimical to capitalism and the state. You know, because because as soon as people as soon as people live in communities which meet their own needs from within, you know, they they, they begin to 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 be centres of resistance to large scale outside organisations. Yeah, but I th yeah. I think it's those face to face relationships which um, make genuine human life. Yeah, yeah um, I, had a, I had a conversation with a, with a Corbynite Labour supporter, nice guy, and he was saying, oh, you know, this, the state is the only way that we can have this safety net for people in, the, in our community. Have you never heard of friendly societies? They, they used to be friendly societies in every single town. Yeah, yeah. Voluntary yeah, contributions, yeah. And, you know, and then yeah, the, yeah. As soon as the state decided that they, they wanted to provide the safety net, then... It was compulsory taxation, and so once it's, often, you... it's often forgotten that the trade union movement was opposed to, to national insurance. Yeah, yeah, it was. Uh, it was uh, the communities looked after each other, and um, yeah. But in, but interestingly, I think I think your Corbynite there missed something about Corbyn and McDonald's program. Because, yes, um, McDonald's it was very program. community wealth building, yeah. wasn't it? They were they were very much into community wealth building. He, yeah, he has this... since he since discovered that. And he's, he's yeah. very much on board with the community wealth building. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm I'm working on a I'm working on a paper at the moment around um, I've, I, I'm working on it under the title of Community by Design um, as a way of challenging people on the left of the Labour Party uh, and in the trade union movement and in organisations like People's Assembly to think about what community might be. My my premise being that any moments of um, success the left has had of left power revolutionary moments you might call them any any of those you care to look at historically have actually arisen out of vibrant healthy communities mm -hmm. um but you know I, I'm, it's it's uh, it, it's um it's difficult to get these things um to get you know people to pay attention to these things but uh, I'll, I'll send you a draft of it when it's I ready would be very interested to read that yes i would be very interested so what, what do you think of the biggest barriers to community building that we need to to remove oh wow well, where do i start <laughs> i'm not i'm not enormously optimistic to be honest i no. i think i think that the i think that the tools are are there um for us and the, but the tools have been developed in parallel by a movement which wouldn't even necessarily consider itself to be political so you know we have tools like uh credit unions community gardens um, uh, uh, food co-ops, 
um, you know, all of these things which already exist, which people are community pioneering. Energy. Sorry? Community yeah. energy. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Co-ops, yeah. Uh, yeah. All community land trusts. Yeah, 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 and we've got and we've got OPD and we've got the you know yeah the ecological um, land corp and so on, and and a million miles away from that, we've got uh, a left wing party with you know um, more than half a million members, who are all concerned with who the next leader is going to be and how they're going to get people out to vote in 2024, as if they could change the world by winning those arguments on the doorsteps in the weeks before the next election. You know, mm. two minute conversations with someone who has had a day at work and doesn't want to talk to you about how they're going to vote next Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and also, if you look at community energy schemes, which are absolutely fantastic, you know, you, you've got communities generating their own energy. Uh, a lot of them are in rural villages where they're Tories. Yeah. They're, 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 the reason they're doing it is for energy independence and because they're, they quite like the engineering involved, and uh, and and also, you know, believe it or not, you know, right wing people like community as well. So it's a, it's a it's a winning argument. I think the community argument is a winning argument for all political. Yeah, people. yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, you know, Bookchin, Murray Bookchin made this argument that in the end, everyone would be drawn together by um, by the ecological crisis. But but you, rec you recommended this book to me. Oh, and how did you enjoy it? I did enjoy it. Good. It's absolutely fantastic, yes, and I would rec recommend that to anybody. Good. If you talk to people from, from any kind of political uh, position, who's going to say that they, they, they don't like community? It's just, <laughs> community is, is vital for human mental health, I think. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Absolutely. So, um, so we can, you know, I've, I've started to look at it in terms of meeting human needs and, and, and thinking about, uh, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of, of needs and how communities meet those needs all the way from food and shelter up to self-realization as a, as a way of, um, as a way of fitting that into the whole permaculture, uh, kind of localist green community building, uh, agenda. I can see the next interview coming together as we speak. I can, yes, I want to talk more about that. <laughs> but I think that's probably, that's probably will do us for today, though. We've been rabbiting on for almost an hour. So, uh, Brilliant, Dave. Lovely to talk to you, mate. Fantastic to talk to you. Great, yeah. And I'm very interested in what you're writing. And I, I definitely would like to have another conversation with you about, about community building. Anytime, anytime, mate. And best of luck with the, um, with the mutual credit stuff that you're working Thank on. you very much. And... Uh, all right then, matey. Chat soon, Dave. See you then. Thanks, mate. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.